devil. Because God is in me. I have all of heaven's best in me. So I must be in some type of disagreement. There's an area in, there's an area in my thinking or in my mindset that I'm not aligned with God in me. And that area is causing me pain and suffering. I'm going to walk outside. Amen. I'm going to go out and have to come back. Because maybe then God will say something back. Amen. Because we don't want to talk about the fact that the reason this isn't working for us is us. Teach. Teach. We don't, we don't, we want to blame everybody for where we are except us. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Amen. 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 When I came in total alignment with God's will for me, I immediately began to walk in divine health and walk in wealth. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. There is an area where you're not caving in. There's an area where you're not, I'm going to say it again, caving in Amen. to God's will and plan for your life. Uh-huh. And that is the area of your pain and suffering. Wow. Wow. Yep. Amen. Not my mother, not my father, but it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. A whooping, not my mother. Not my Some of you that prayed and prayed and prayed, but you're disobedient. You're disobedient to the vision. You're disobedient to the voice. You're disobedient to the will of God. You, you're disobedient to it. And wherever you are disobedient, that's your area of pain and suffering. You should write that down. It might help you. Because we blame everybody else. But we won't blame ourselves. And that's got to be hard. That's got to be tough on God to live on the inside of a person who doesn't want to do what is in there to help him do. That's got to be tough. That's what you call grieving the Holy Spirit. That's what you call, come on now, grieving the Holy Spirit. you got all God on the inside of you. And he is trying to guide. He's trying to lead. He's trying to take you in a place. And you're saying constantly, I don't want to do that. I don't want to go there. So religion gives you an out. Religion tells you that if you sin, you can repent. So you live in this cycle of repentance because you keep sinning. You keep disobeying God. You keep disobeying what God is saying to you to do. We make all kinds of excuses. I'm going to ask you to repeat this after me because I just can't look at you right now. <laughs> so why don't you just say this after me? The area of pain, pain and suffering is the area I'm in disobedience. It doesn't get any easier than that. The moment you repent and come into agreement with God's will for you, and it can be something ever so simple as you call someone and say, I'm sorry. Amen. And you have adapted your whole life to saying, I'm not going to say And I'm never going to say I'm sorry. But God in you yes. is saying, I need you to say, I'm sorry. Amen. Amen. 
There could be an area where God is saying, I need you to forgive. Now, you're walking with God in you. So God is constantly pruning and proving and perfecting. And you have said, I'm never going to sin. They should have did what they did to me. And I don't care how it look, I ain't going to do it. <laughs> and maybe you said that at 11. And now you're 50. <laughs> and y'all don't say that. There was a girl in this church, and she said to me, I said, when did you get so defiant? Gifted. Right now, one of the most gifted playwrights in my generation. And God sent her to me, and sent her to this ministry. But as I began to unravel the gift, mm -hmm. that's when I began to see that area of defiance. And I said, when did you get this defiance? I'm not defiant. Said, yes, you are. <laughs> you want to live on the gift, but you don't want to clear up the area of defiance. So she said to me, after many, many, many many counseling sessions and talking sessions and lunch sessions and eating sessions together, she finally said, you know, I was sitting at the table one day and my mother had cooked for me dinner and there was some green peas on the plate. And she said to me that I had to eat those green beans. But I know that my mother knew I didn't like green beans. So I don't know why she always put green peas on <laughs> and I said, so what did you do? She said, I didn't eat. I will always leave it on my plate. And this one particular night, my mother said, you're going to sit there all night till you eat those green beans. She said, I said, well, I'm just going to sit there. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody going to say nothing to me. Wow. Right. And she sat back. And when her mother came the next morning, she said, I need to fall asleep. She said, I was so determined that I could prove my mother wrong, that I just never ate the peas, and I sat right there. I had to go to school the next morning, and I never got up. I went to the bathroom and came back and sat right there. And when my mother got up the next morning, I was sitting there, and I had proved my point. She said, okay, get on up. Go to school. I said, do you realize today you were wrong? And she said, no, I wasn't wrong. I said, what makes you not wrong? She knew I didn't lie. One of the greatest playwrights of my generation is the airline stewards. Because what area are you in pain and suffering? Lack deprivation because of something God in you is telling you to correct and you will not.
So it's never because he hasn't convicted you. Right. But you have become accustomed to not moving, not submitting, not agreeing, not cooperating. And there is an area of, listen, when I said yes to God, this body was healed completely. The very physician that attended me, he wasn't even on staff. He was on a different hospital staff rotation. But because I was in another hospital, he got permission to attend me there, deliver my children. The last time I saw him, he said, Carl, he said, if I was not there, I would have never known that you were as sick as you were. I said, what are you saying? He said, there is no trace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I had privately, quietly said I would never preach because I was a girl. And because I had been religion had robbed me of what I thought my right. Religion told me I couldn't do it. So when the Lord kept pounding on me and pounding on me, I, I never said it out loud, but I privately said, I won't do it. I can't do it. This is what I said to God. Do you know I'm a girl? 1977, when I got deathly ill, it took them forever to find out what was wrong with me. And it was still just precancerous. I went home only to go back to the hospital several times, over and over, until finally they said, okay, we're going to do surgery, we're going to do this. I got so sick in the hospital. Until finally, when they did the surgery and took me home, I began to hemorrhage and had to be rushed back to the hospital. Laying in the hallway, I said to my mother, I said, I'm gonna die. I'm 20 something years old. I have two little girls. I said, Mom, you gotta take care of my girls. She said, you're not dying. She asked me a question. What has God said to you to do? You're not doing wow. oh. God is in me. So I should not be suffering. <laughs> I should not be sick. Yes. I should not be tired. Yes. Yes. I should not have that. Yes. Yes. There is something going on in the area of your submission. Wow. Yes. I got in that emergency room and turned my face to that wall and left my body. When I got in the tunnel, and God said, where are you going? I said, I'm coming home. He said, I'm not ready for you here yet. You go back. And I saw those holes in those hands. He said, I've called you to be an apostle to my people. I've called you to be an apostle to my people. Go back, preach the gospel, heal the sick, cast out devils, and deliver my people from religious bondage. Three days later, I came back in my body. When I opened my eyes, my face was filled Water, tears. My mother said the whole time, all I kept saying was, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. From that day to today, I had two chemo treatments. Finally, they said, wait a minute, let's draw some blood. And when they drew the blood, there was no reason for me to take no more chemo. Wow. 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 I made this confession. I don't believe I ever had cancer. What I had was disobedience. I'm going home. Y'all can go home too. 